that there's a lot we could say about that. Yeah. Um, well, I think one of the biggest things that we noticed was that people don't assume that um, it's our company. Um, they say, what's it like to work for them? Or, uh, you know, um, are you with marketing or, or something like that? Um, and I think that really did hurt us in the early days. I think a more, an even more stark example of that is being with at an event with our head of sales, who is a man in his 40s in a suit next to me at a stand and um, you know a buyer coming along asking key questions about the product about the company about the financials and ignoring me mm. when i try to enter the conversation they completely push me aside and when it comes down to making a decision simon then has to turn around and say well you're gonna have to ask her actually she's a boss um, and then the tone completely changes but it's just you're invisible um, it's that level of invisibility um, and then also, I think, with the investment. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we, it, the, the statistics show that it's such a challenge for women to get investment anyway. Um, and as purely female-founded uh, business, the, the odds are against us. Um, you know, we've done really well, but we did definitely get a lot of condescending comments or questions when we were putting ourselves out there on uh, crowdfunding websites. Um, and I think these days what we try to do is we really try to just talk about it and we call it out every time it happens. Um, Which isn't can, easy. Yeah, no, it's not easy and it can be confrontational at times. But if you're not talking about it, if you're not putting it out there, then it's just going to keep happening and we don't want to perpetuate it. Yeah. The answer. Yeah. Perfectly said. There we are. So I think before even approaching the supermarket, what we needed to do was make sure that the product was as good as it could be, that the branding was solid, that we had enough money to support the listing if it was granted, because that's a key issue that a lot of small or new businesses don't consider, is it's actually very expensive to have a supermarket list and you need a lot of financial backing, and they know that. So they're never gonna give you a listing if they don't think you have a lot of money. So you need that. Um, and then building hype about the product. So getting a lot of people excited about it online, requesting it, tagging the retailer. Um, so that, that's that been probably the most successful way that we've done it. Did you want to add Yeah, to I, I think as well, um, these things take so much time. You know, an average yeah. of at least two years when you're talking about the big four retailers. Um, so just, I think being patient for us was really important um, and it's worked, you know, we, we are in Tesco now and talking to other retailers. Um, but yeah, it, just as Joelle said, it's, it's about, you know, building the product, the product needs to be great, the, the merchandising needs to be great um, and you also need to have that hype um, and you need to be prepared for a bit of rejection as well because you're not going to get a yes the first time you, you go to a retailer. But you can go back, don't just accept mm. rejection the first time but acknowledge when maybe you need to take a break and come back in a year's time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. another good question. Um, well, from my perspective, um, I uh, obviously I'm Australian and I started doing some very basic home brewing um, in Australia. Um, so I kind of took that, a little bit of that um, into Drop Bear and then us together, we basically watched YouTube videos. Um, we went to the library and took out all the home brewing books that we could. Yeah, um, we everything about beer. Everything, yeah. We went to Bristol um, to a home brewing sh um, shop and we bought all of the supplies and we just kind of did it and decided yeah. to see what would happen. I think we, we got as much information as we could with the uh, resources at hand. We gave it a go and then we acknowledged when we didn't have enough um, skills and information. So what we did was we created the base recipes at the start of Drop Bear and we, you know, we worked with them a lot, but we acknowledged that we weren't confident enough to enter the market with just our expertise. So we actually onboarded the ex Heineken brewer as a consultant a couple of months in, just to make sure that what we were creating was commercially viable and scalable because brewing in a tiny saucepan compared to a major brewery is a very different topic you know yes, yes. it's very different so we needed that expertise you know we just couldn't have had it yeah I think tips for you know if you want to start home brewing there's so many resources online 
Um, there's lots of people who do things different ways as well. So um, I think looking and getting some, some books and texts that actually go through the science of it all is really interesting and really important to have that foundation so you, you know what's going on when you're randomly boiling this barley. <coughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think give that a go and there's so many resources online. So yeah. Also keep everything extremely clean, otherwise yeah. your beer will be infected and it will stink of egg and you do not want that smell in your house, trust us, you've been there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so honestly, our experience, our initial experience with export was quite passive. So again, going back to that question of building hype around the brand and the products and just concentrating on getting the brand and the product right, um, we were actually approached. So we didn't go out looking for the opportunity. They came to us and uh, it was a success. And what that did was it opened our eyes to the global potential of of the product. So um, we then took it from there and started researching easy wins abroad to try and dip our toe into the market. Um, so for example, during COVID, that was um, e-commerce. Yeah. So yeah. the internet, essentially. Yeah, a lot of our export opportunities have come from people who've come to us. So we've been really lucky in that way. We are now actively going out and pursuing leads as well. Um, but export is, it's almost like a whole separate business. It's such a, a, a big, part or it can be a really big part of your business um, and there's lots of moving parts to it and um, especially with Brexit that you know things are a bit more complicated um, but it, it can be a really exciting thing for UK brands to, to look outwards as well and, and not just focus on the UK market. So. It can be exciting but um, be cautious as well because yeah. you need to make sure that when you send your product and brand abroad that you maintain control over it um, and there are certain markets where that's more of an issue um, so just do your research and if an exciting opportunity does come your way, just take a moment, obviously get excited, but be calm and evaluate it properly before moving forward. There is actually a lot of government um, support available as well um, from the, the DIT, Department of International Trade, um, and we also get help from the Welsh Government regarding export. So maybe look into those resources as well because um, it's really hard to have the internal resources when it comes to export when you're just starting out. Yeah. Both, actually. <laughs> yes, I would. Yeah, I'd say the company website. Yeah, let's say the company website. Just so we don't give Jeff any more money. <laughs> <laughs> don't get that on camera. Don't say Jeff, that. we want your money. We it's love fine. Jeff. <laughs> um, <coughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So we we have these bad boys um, on our um, web shop. So if you go onto our website and you go on to the shop section, um, you can find them on there. So yeah, they do prove pretty popular. They're very popular, and as well as looking um, pretty awesome, they're actually carbon neutral and 100% organic uh, cotton. So they feel really nice as well. Okay, um, so you know everyone is on their own journey. I know that sounds a little hippie, but it, it really is true. So whilst you're on your journey, you know, have your mission, have your um, idea of success, and you know, just keep working towards being the best that you can be, and stop comparing yourself to everyone else because they're on their own journey. You don't know where they started. They don't know where you started. Um, it's something we've struggled with, but kind of acknowledging that um, really helps um, keep us on track. I think something for me as well is that when things do get bad, it, it doesn't last and that there is usually always you know, light around the corner um, and things will get easier and things will get better. Um, and to just acknowledge those things in your life that are the most important to you um, and to work on them. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably some wisdom there. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs>